And welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. A story months in the making. We've been talking about the future of House Speaker Mike Madigan's stronghold on the State House for quite some time. After escaping criticism over his handling of sexual harassment at the Capitol, years of whispers about his backdoor deals, Madigan found himself in an unprecedented position last summer. Federal prosecutors implicating a new, quote, public official A in a case that was unsealed last summer. ComEd executives accused of trying to bribe Mike Madigan by giving allies jobs and contracts. Madigan maintains his innocence, hasn't been charged with any wrongdoing, but the revelation set off a bipartisan firestorm calling for him to step aside. Now the speaker is fighting for his political life and a position he's held for all but two years since 1983. It all comes down to Wednesday when the new legislature is sworn in. Their first order of business, pick a House speaker. For Madigan, it's all about the math. He secured support from the black and Latino caucuses, but every Republican and 19 Democrats of the 73-person caucus, and that puts it at about six, said they're just not going to uh, vote for Madigan again. That leaves him a few votes shy. As I said, looks like six right now of the 60 he needs to secure another term. Uh, all of this this morning. As this morning, three women have stepped up, asking colleagues to choose them for the job instead. Democrats Stephanie Kifowit of Aurora, Kathleen Willis of Addison, and Ann Williams of Chicago have all lobbied for votes ahead of Wednesday. Lawmakers can't proceed with any official business until somebody reaches the 60-vote threshold, which could take days, maybe weeks. State Representative Ann Williams, representing the north side of Chicago, joins us live this morning from Springfield to talk about the fight ahead this week. Representative, good morning. Thanks for being with me. Let me start by asking you, why throw your hat in the ring? Well, Paul, as you know, um, many House Democrats came forward over the past couple months, including myself, to be clear that we need to see new leadership for the Illinois House. When it became apparent that the Speaker was still going to keep his hat in the ring and we were moving forward without a lot of options and alternatives, I thought it was time to provide my caucus with a vision to move forward uh, for the future of Illinois and decided to... Um, Give it a shot. So if you can for a moment, be our eyes and ears in the room. Is there tension in the room over this? Is it business as usual? What's the atmosphere like right now? Well, as you can imagine, um, it's very divided, as it is throughout the state and country, frankly. We are dealing with unprecedented crises, both in terms of public health issues, uh, the budget fallout that will occur as a result, and that trickles down to the caucus room. Um, plus, you know, we're supposed to start business in uh, just a few days, and we're not prepared. Uh, we haven't met as a legislature since May. In the meantime, uh, people are losing their jobs. Women can't can't uh, find child care. Um, people are trying to homeschool their kids while trying to manage, um, you know, employment. It's it's just a time that we need to focus on the needs of Illinoisans. Let me play devil's advocate for just a moment because Madigan and his supporters have said, look, he's the only one that can get business done. He's the fundraiser. This is a huge year with budgeting and redistricting. Why is this the time to bring in, and with all due respect, but a rookie to the to the role of speaker when there's so much going on? Well, Paul, I'm hardly a rookie. I've been working in and around the Illinois uh, legislature for over 20 years. I served as political or legislative director for Attorney General Lisa Madigan. I also was a staff attorney years ago in the Illinois House. And I've been in the legislature. I'm now running for my, or I'm actually in my sixth term. So I have the experience it takes and uh, the ability, I think, to bridge the gap uh, with some of the division that's happening within the caucus right now. I think there's a call for new fresh leadership because of the issues we face. We are facing revenue shortfall that we've never seen before. We are dealing with the public health crisis and the extreme economic disparities we've seen along with so many others uh, in terms of systemic inequities. Having a leader that um, is looking forward that shares a vision of the people of Illinois, will put the people first, uh, is, is really what I think the caucus needs to move us forward. So it, it's not just you challenging him. Of course, it's Representative Kathleen Willis, Stephanie Kifowit. It is interesting, all women, uh, and I mentioned uh, leading up to you that there was, of course, the sexual harassment concerns uh, of a couple of years ago. Uh, it, is that one of the reasons it, it's important that a woman take this role right now, or is that not the key? 
Well, I think it's important to remember there's a lot at play here. Um, of course, uh, I would like to see a woman uh, advance as Speaker of the House and in many other important public and private positions. That's something we need to see and, and we're woefully behind even though it's 2021. But I think there are a lot of issues. Um, power is too centralized in the Illinois House. Everything is very top down. And the face of the Illinois House, as diverse as our Democratic caucus is, we have members from all walks of life. We have a, a robust uh, Black caucus, Latinx caucus, and uh, a growing number of Asian Americans serving. We need a leader that reflects the caucus and will allow all those members to shine individually. Right now, it's all about one person. What message is sent to Illinois? If Speaker Madigan is reelected as Speaker, um, one would argue that the message to Illinoisans is, you know what, with all of the screaming and the yelling, but it's just business as usual, Democrats have done it again. I think I will share in the <laughs> frustration if that happens, Paul. I think people need to recognize there's a, a vast difference between power and leadership. And it's time for true leadership in the House and a vision forward. And I'm hopeful that we'll see that unfold in the next few days. So what shakes it up? Right now when you look at the numbers, as I've said, Madigan about six votes short. He's close, but he's six votes short. That seems to be tight right now. But none of the three of you who are challenging him, uh, there doesn't seem to be the groundswell of support. Again, with, with respect, how does does one of you trigger the support and, and break the uh, break the wall, so to speak? Well, I do have a coalition of supporters, and I will be receiving uh, a large chunk of votes today. And I think the number will only grow. As you can imagine, the speaker, after almost four decades of power and four decades of controlling all the money, uh, all the information, um, has a lot of ability to control the process. But I think once we get past the first vote or two, I think we'll see a lot of momentum for my candidacy. And I'm hopeful that uh, we'll move forward, uh, move the caucus forward, and be able to start the new GA with a brand new speaker on January 13th, and I'm hopeful that person is me. All right, out of time, by the way, do you think, do, do we get the speaker like on day one, day two? How long do you think it takes overall? I sure hope so. The state of Illinois can't wait. All right, that was a short answer, thank you. Representative Ann Williams, appreciate your time. Good luck in the challenge.